Hi folks, I just thought I'd make a short video to keep it interesting. One of our group members, Jody, has found this piece of Chalcedony lodged in, the, in a crevice in the rocks at Slade Point, which is a beach part of the Mackay region. And she's asked for it to be cut in half, which I shall do on the saw, and then um, dress up the two halves for display and put a polish on each half. So we'll have a look at that. First we'll cut it. Cuts worked out well. Two halves, a little bit of pink colour in there, yellow, cream, and a bit of grey. We've just got a bit of a saw dag there along that edge there, so we'll grind that off with a uh, dry diamond blade on an angle grinder. I'll show you that process now. So, this is just a normal four inch, 100 millimeter angle grinder. This is a dry diamond abrasive disc, available on eBay for about three Australian dollars each. My angle grinder needs a spacer, so this doesn't wobble around, but not all angle grinders are the same. When you're working with dry diamond blades, it's in your interest to put on a dust mask and some hearing protection. Next wheel we use is a uh, PVA abrasive wheel. It's uh, an, an abrasive that's suspended in a spongy plastic. Usually available in this four inch or 100 millimeter size for your normal angle grinder. And it can take the speed that a normal angle grinder runs out. 11,400, 11, well that's about what an angle grinder is. This will just uh, take the major scratches out of it.
actually stop here with some of the scratches left in it just to point something out this scratch here is away from the edge don't work the blade too heavy in this area that you make a hollow that rises up to the edge so what I mean is the edge comes in like that you've ground away the scratch you go down and then the rock rises again to the other edge when you're working grinding away with your PVA wheel at this scratch if my finger was the blade work the blade the wheel across but keep working it towards the edge and then more pressure to round off the edge and the same if you come when you're working the wheel back this way grind away at the scratch but keep grinding run out your work to the other edge and round it off then you'll end up with a flat surface I think you might be able to pick up there in the video that the it's still high in the middle and runs slightly downhill to each side this is perfect that's what you want if you're going to polish with a wet diamond disc which is our, which is what I'm going to do in the next stage another point when you've got the scratch all the major scratches out of your surface that you want to polish then purposely run the wheel over all the edges a bit of pressure just in from the edge run the wheel off and the same turning the stone off off to end up with that rounded edge on the, on the uh, end of the flat surface there it highlights the polish the polish looks better and it kept the rounded edge catches the, once it's polished, catches the light and makes the, the entire polish job look even better. just want to step back for a moment in the process we were talking about rounding the surface off when using the PVA abrasive wheel on the angle grinder for this slightly very slightly domed effect I do that because what I polish with is wet diamond discs If you're going on to polish on a flat lap wheel, you it's not ideal to dome it like I have or round it off. You want the surface entirely flat. So, so at this stage, if you are going on to a flat lap wheel, this grind your sur uh, surface scratches out and leave the surface flat. Because if you do round it off, you're only making more work for yourself on the flat lap wheel, which a flat lap. The next step in my process is to use these a sander with a variable speed because these wet diamond discs which are uh, diamond particles suspended in uh, soft plastic can only spin at a certain speed and the angle grind is too fast by using a sander you can tone the revs down and, and, and these discs can handle the speed an ideal situation is to use a water-fed sander, I'm not sure what the proper name is, uh, a polishing tool where water is fed in the spindle area through the backing pad and out and out the hole at the front on, onto the surface of the rock. The water is flowing through the through this centerpiece and wetting the rock all the time. 
I haven't been able to afford one yet so at this stage I just use a dry sander and I keep dipping the rock all the time in water as I'm doing it. Now these discs come in various grits. See that? This set cost me about $30, uh, $30 Australian dollars on eBay and it includes um, a, a, a good set of uh, grit sizes to get up to the fine 10,000 and a backing pad comes with it. Just in this, when you put a, make a note to the eBay supplier what size your spindle is, mine's 14 mil, and that's the standard they send you is 14 mil. But some sanders the spindle is 10 mil, and you must you must uh, communicate that to the supplier, and he'll send you the right wheel with the set. Now the tracking pad simply spins on to the sander. And you select the starting grit, which in this set is 50. Some sets start at 100. I've got my numbers mixed up here. This one goes in here. So I'll go from 50 grit to 100, 400, 200, 800, 3000, 6000, and 10,000 to give it a nice uh, buffed, shiny finish. And then I'll just give it a touch up on a stitch size or buffing wheel which I'll talk about later. So what I do put a bit of detergent in the water just to drop about the same as when you're doing the dishes. That lubricates the surface, the plastic diamond surface against the stone and um, just just makes a, a nice balance between the abrasive action and the and the and the sliding of, of, on the rock surface. So as I said, I will start at 50. I just dampen the surface of it, stick it to the Velcro backing pad, now. I'll because it's an electrical tool and the, the rock and the disc front is going to be wet, always make sure this is higher than your water. I just work in an action similar to this with the sander running. I dip the rock, polish the surface, spin the rock in my hand, polish, dip, spin the rock in my hand, polish, dip. Spin the rock in my hand, polish, dip, and then work the rounded the rounded edges. Dip, rounded edges, dip, rounded edges, etc.
and that's the first of the grits. Now when you early grits, 50 grits and 100, purposely, when you finish the rock will be wet, purposely let, let the rock dry, you'll see a new set of scratches, they're circular. Now this is fine because they're done by the uh, wet diamond discs themselves. Each progressive higher grit will remove the scratches from the grit before. The, the circular scratches are here because the the waves in the rock are, get, are, are getting smoothed out. It's, it's doing its job. Everything's good. Everything's fine. So we finish with a 50 grit and we'll move on to the 100 grit wet diamond disc. And as I mentioned before, um, the, you won't spend so much time as, as you progress through the grits. 50 grit, I, I wet, dip and wet the rock and turn it 20 times and uh, 100 grit I do it 19 times and so on and so on and so on as I get through the grits just reducing the amount of time that I'm um, abrasing the, the rock surface. So we've reached the 800 grit, which is uh, in my set is a bit more than halfway through. Now we're using the discs less and less as the grits get higher. Just a tip: uh, don't probably don't skip grits for the simple reason you, you're aware your discs out faster going from a coarse grit to a medium grit instead of the, 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 the intermediate steps. You only use it each, each uh, disc a little bit, so you're not going to gain anything anyway, and, you, and you, you'll get your value from your investment in your discs, they'll last a lot longer. As you can see, we're, we're getting that rounded off edge so that it just enhances the polish and makes it a lot better. The rock is wet at the moment, but as we get to the, the um, final two grits, the shine starts to come out. So we've completed the final grit, which in this set is a 10,000 grit. And we're just give the rocks a bit of a dry off. Rag. Very hard to do with one hand. And uh, I haven't seen this myself, so I'll have a look. Yeah. yeah, we've got a nice shine on there, but we'll uh, improve that by buffing it a bit. If you don't have a buff, just uh, a, 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 a vigorous rubbing with a soft rag like this one, an old pair of ladies' pajamas, just like a soft material or, or a, du a dust cloth. Just give it a lot of rubbing, but I do have a buff. If you're lucky enough to have a bench grinder, I use a stitched uh, sisal uh, wheel. This is a metal cutting, designed for metal cutting. But on rocks, it's perfect for bringing the final shine because rocks are um, made up a bit differently from metal and a little bit harder. If you don't have a bench grinder, 
as long as you get stitch size or you can get this in a drill attachment as well that has a spindle on it and will fit in the, in the chuck of your drill it, they're, they're about half the size of this or three quarters of the size of this and they'll do they'll do the same job Use the same action you used when you were um, using the wet discs. Just pick a spot to start, say the round edge, up and down, you know, and curving it on the buff to get the, the rounded edges. Then, when you've done that way, spin it a quarter of a turn, the same, up and down and back again. Spin it a quarter of a turn, up and down, and spin it a quarter of a turn, and that should be enough. probably not a bad finish and that's that the process complete the rocks are ready for display in your collection so don't be afraid to have a go um, you only live once probably for an investment of a couple hundred dollars you're, you're set up to do many many rocks then these wet diamond discs last a long time you get a lot of service out of them for a, for a low and low price all right thanks for watching